The announcement by Mark Zuckerberg recently that Facebook would become Meta Platforms caused a stir outside of Silicon Valley. It quickly gained popularity in China as well, sparking heated discussions among entrepreneurs, investors, and their companies. It is hardly surprising that the metaverse concept accelerated the Chinese computer community. Every few years, a central issue manifests itself that unites resources and talent. It is equivalent to having the power to make fortunes to be able to ride such waves, or even better, to govern and shape them. A vast universe to discover and conquer beyond cell phones was promised by the metaverse. It represented an opportunity to outperform the major corporations that currently dominate mobile computing. Over the years, people have witnessed countless classmates and friends become enthralled by such cycles, chasing investment bubbles in real estate and private equity and beginning their careers as government employees before moving on to found startups. In the world of technology, investment themes have changed dramatically in a short period of time. From desktop-based social media and games to mobile messaging, to online to offline services, and now the metaverse. The Tencent Holdings co-founder and reclusive chair Pony Ma Huateng, a Chinese digital giant, has consistently remained one step ahead. Pony Ma actually openly outlined a vision for creating something very close to the metaverse just a few months before Zuckerberg announced his company's name change commanding an entertainment and social media empire with a scale comparable to Meta. Pony Ma gave it the name All Real Internet, or the Quan Zen Internet, which translates to All Real Internet. Although not clearly defined, the idea includes leveraging the online to combine labor and production, and many features of the Facebook's co-founder vision are shared by the Quan Zen Internet. However, Given that Beijing will be keeping a close eye on it from the start, this version may end up very differently. The word metaverse made its debut in Neil Stephenson's 1992 book Snow Crash, which imagined a world engulfed in hyperinflation. An anarcho-capitalist society was the world that Stephenson pictured. The story is also heavily anti-authoritarian as is the case with all, with all cyberpunk literature. If the Chinese government decides the technology has value, China and the rest of the world might become separate metaverses in the future. The second largest economy in the world will probably keep its citizens isolated from the rest of the global metaverse, similar to how the internet does. The government put the internet sector on a free leash while concealing it behind a firewall, which is in part why it has expanded to the size it is now. Controlling the supply of gas, oil, telecommunications, financial services, and traditional media was increasingly important to the nation. In communist China, there were hardly any obstacles for local and foreign investors. The largest population on Earth was able to be combined with the most advanced technology. The situation will be different in the metaverse. Others are such less optimistic, despite the fact that local government leaders in cities like Shanghai appear to be on board with the idea and have stated their intention to promote its use in the industry, social entertainment, and games. Ren Zeping, a Chinese economist, warned about the perils of a metaverse claiming that it would lead to lower rates of marriage and procreation. His argument was that if people are spending too much time amusing themselves online, they won't need to make friends in the real world. Even politically neutral issues like health policy have the potential to lead to restrictions. Youth myopia is an issue in China right now, and gaming businesses like Tencent are being blamed for making it worse. It doesn't improve the situation when a generation kids wear VR headsets. The Lie Flat movement, which has grown in popularity among young people looking to escape the never-ending corporate rat race, is also being mocked by authorities. Despite the unpredictability, businesses and investors are moving ahead with their planning and investments for what may turn out to be the next big thing. In the three months of following Zuckerberg's transition to more than 8,500 in China, the number of applications for metaverse-related trademarks tripled. Tencent is also putting together plans. According to its president, Martin Lau, 
The company possesses the technology and know how to create the metaverse because of its extensive gaming and social media experience. It is already the local publisher for China for the Roblox gaming platform, which enables players to build virtual worlds and is widely recognized as a workable prototype for the metaverse of the future. According to executives at Tencent, it will take the industry at least another five years to reach a stage where people will accept the technology as legitimate. Not too far away, actually. Another idea known as Web3 is also in the works. By constructing services on top of blockchains or managing and accessing them through distributed peer-to-peer -peer networks, Web3 would return the internet to its decentralized roots. Companies from Web2 era are sending teams internally to create their own Web3 platforms that incorporate these services in order to stay current. Tencent is no exception since it is considering how to carve out a niche in the internet's future architecture, although it has particular limitations. The promises of Web3 are enticing enough so that businesses and ventures capitalists are already rushing into the space creating memes that have rendered the concept somewhat amorphous that the ideal version of Web3 is an executable Magna Carta, the foundation of the freedom of the individual against the arbitrary authority of the despot. The idea of Web3, according to critics, is humorously perverted since they are wagering that it will produce the next Apple and reinstate corporate domination in a field that is designed to support the underdog. One of the most vocal opponents is former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, who claims that rather than democratizing the internet, the present craze is simply another weapon of venture capitalists. Elon Musk has claimed that it is merely marketing BS. The concept of Web3 is so incompatible with the government's primary objectives, which include keeping control over content and infrastructure that developing it in China is practically impossible. Additionally, China may miss out on the potential next wave if it restricts its own technological businesses. Someone like Pony Ma must find all of this incredibly annoying. The self-described geek has, in some ways, achieved his goal and is now at a crossroads, wondering what kind of legacy he will leave behind. As a child, he used to stare at the stairs and wonder how he could improve the universe. As one of the forerunners of the global mobile internet, he discovered his calling by connecting billions to vastly expanded spheres of mobile entertainment and communications while on the go. He made it possible for lovers, families, and friends to maintain their emotional bonds even as they traveled across the Pacific, making it possible for them to stay in touch and visit one another. The only tool required when traveling in China is a phone because life has gotten so convenient. Pony Ma attained fame and power that exceeded his wildest expectations as a result. Possibly everything is now out of his control. A beast that must be tamed and a weapon that must be used to secure the dominance of the party, the empire he has built may have become too large and powerful for the Chinese government to bear setting off on new paths and the situation can be dangerous. The settings of Ready Player One and Snow Crash don't give me the greatest hope for humanity's future. They show heartbreaking conflicts with all-seeing, all-powerful institutions. Some would contend that China, which has set up the biggest and most effective monitoring and control system in the world, is where this vision is currently taking shape. Pony Mass Dilemma is how to drive Tencent forward while placating his political overlords, an extremely delicate maneuver with unfathomable implications. Some could argue that Pony Ma has a duty to attempt given the remarkable accomplishments of the previous 20 years. Who better to square that circle to create a strategy that will work for a fifth of the world's population than the brilliant founder of the biggest online entertainment empire? The billionaire may therefore not be set back anytime soon. Maybe he doesn't even have a choice. Playing whack-a-mole with potentially disruptive forces would be more difficult for the party than having one powerful, all-knowing, but subservient firm govern everything. 
pony mass decision in the wake of China Tech's recent Anus Horribilis provide some insight into his future plans, or at the very least reveal his overarching position for the general populace and his political masters. Pony Ma wanted Tencent to become an infrastructure-like operation, the equivalent of water and electricity for the internet when he reorganized the company in the last 10 years and opened up the company's platform. Pony Ma has since changed her mind, telling her team at a 2021 year-end conference that Tencent is just another company that has benefited from the enormous advancements the nation has made. He was quoted by the local media outlet Late Post as claiming that Tencent is not an infrastructure service firm and can be replaced at any time. Tencent must watch out for overstepping boundaries and act as a helpful partner in the future when serving the nation and society. The ancient Chinese writing of the I Ching, also known as the Book of Changes, imparts a hint of wisdom that an overconfident dragon will have cause for regret. Pony Ma's generation of business people spent the first half of their lives swimming upstream like carp and living over the Yellow River's gates to become dragons. Therefore, according to conventional wisdom, the second half of their lives will be spent learning when to give up or possibly join the system they once sought to change. From our discussion, what ideas did you get? How does China threaten to splinter the metaverse? Please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel Metaverse for more videos like this. Thank you for stopping by to watch. See you in our next video. Bye!